Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Color Nation Media and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon White. This is episode number 41 and in the last episode we did some exploring in Wellspring Cave off of Route 3 uh, which is next to uh, Striation City and we finished off uh, eventually working our way over to Necreen City after exploring uh, some of the other areas in Route 3 that we could not get to. Uh, in this episode, instead of heading off to Dragon Spiral Tower yet again, uh, we're going to do some exploring off of Route 1. That's right, Route 1. Uh, so we're going to fly to Accumula Town here, and now that I'm here, um, we're going to need Surf, so obviously I have Seismitoad with me, and I forgot to teach my uh, Zeb Strike at Thunder Wave again. He still has Flash from uh, the last episode, so I might as well do that really fast, because there's no sense in him having Flash. In fact, I don't even know if I'm going to need to use Flash at all throughout the rest of the game, so uh, there's no point having him know that. So in Route 1, off to the left here, there's an area where you can surf, and you may or may not have noticed this um, at the beginning of the game when you were here, but uh, this actually leads off to another route and a bunch of items and things uh, as well, so... Uh, yeah, we're still, I guess, technically on Route 1? I don't know. It didn't say that the route changed, although it does at some point. I'm just not sure exactly where. But uh, I guess the first thing that we're going to do is battle this trainer here. I choose a move and my Pokemon will obey all that stuff. I don't even know if that's what she said, but I made it up because that's what I do. Pokemon Ranger Brenda, she has a Swoobat at level 35, and we battled quite a few of these, so we know how to handle them. As a Psychic and Flying and type. So, I'm going to go for Spark, which will be super effective, and yeah, I don't know why I said it like that, but uh, Swoobat goes down in one hit, and she's going to send out Simiseer next, and I want revenge on this thing because Zebstrika just got raped by one in the last episode because of Lick of all things, so this time I get the Paralysis, uh, but of course, he works through it and hits me with a Flame Burst, but at least I'm not paralyzed from that, and then he can finish him off with a second Spark. And Zeb Stricka gets his revenge! Wahaha! <laughs> yes, he would laugh just like that too. And uh, we get a person berry for our uh, efforts there, which uh, cures confusion for those of you that were wondering. Um, so I might use that, I don't know. It's a shame that you can't get the yellow flute in this game because the yellow flute is amazing. We might as well battle this fisherman here. He's completely optional because he just faces uh, the cliff, so he can't actually see you to battle you. You have to go talk to him. And I thought, why not? He has a Frillish here at level 34. It's a water and ghost type Pokemon, and it's mainly defensive. It doesn't have a lot in the way of uh, attack power, but it has a lot of HP and special defense specifically. So I went for a physical move in Spark, which is also super effective, and it finishes him off in one hit. Zebstrick is trying to learn Agility, level 42, but didn't want to teach that to him because uh, he doesn't need that. He has Flame Charge, which, in, which can uh, increase his speed if need be. Uh, but for the most part, Zebstrick is going to be faster than almost anything, so uh, provided that he's not paralyzed, of course. So he just doesn't need that. It's not a necessary move. And he can't learn Baton Pass, uh, which would be the only reason that I would give that to him, so that he could pass it off um, to really slow Pokemon and make them fast with Agility, but... There's just no point in giving that to him, so... Yeah, I passed on that. And let me see here, in my trusty bag. Look at all these items, I need to sell some crap. So I'm gonna give a lucky egg to uh, Seismitoad so he can get some added experience. I haven't used him in a while. I think the last time I used him was against Bryson. And he only went against, um, what was it? One of his Pokemon, Kraganol maybe? No! Oh, I didn't even use him against um, Bryson because I used Archaeops. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Forget I said anything. All right, this ranger has Chinchino, a level 35 normal type, and uh, it's pretty fast, faster than Seismitoad at least, and it goes for the Sing, so I'm asleep. And that kind of sucks. So I'm just going to uh, try to attack him because that's the easiest thing to do. Thankfully, this thing doesn't have tech. Uh, not Technician. It probably does have Technician. Thankfully, it doesn't have Skill Link. Otherwise, Tail Slap would have hit five times every single time. And it's a stab move, too, so that could have been bad. Uh, but we wake up pretty fast there and finish it off with a couple of Brick Breaks, which are super effective. And he has a Zeb Stricka of his own coming out next. It's only at level 35, though, so that shouldn't be too bad. And thankfully, I did not flinch from that Stomp. 
and I'm able to uh, kill it off with one uh, bulldoze from Seismitoad, and that's the end of that battle. Seismitoad almost grew up to level 42 there, but not quite, and we get another person berry for uh, defeating this ranger, so if we get confused twice, we can uh, snap out of it twice, I guess, instead of using a full heal. Anyway, I picked up a pearl there in the corner, and that pretty much does nothing for us. I'm just going to sell that. And, oh, the electric bulletin board has gone pitch black here. Interesting. What do you have to say? Wasting time is worse than wasting money, huh? I guess that kind of is. All right, so now we have made it to Route 17, and there's just water and little islands everywhere, and rapids, too, which makes it kind of difficult to surf around. So... Uh, I'm going to use a Max Repel so that I don't get attacked by stupid Water-type Pokemon and all that stuff. So let's surf and see what we can find. I'm sure there's some items and trainers. Well, it looks like there's a Fisherman, and we might as well battle him, right? And I do see an item up to the north there, so I'll grab that in a minute. Fisherman Leiden? I don't know if I read that correctly. I don't, I'm not sure if that was Linden or Leiden. I didn't get to see if there was an end. But anyway, he has a Basculin. And that's at level 34. It is uh, physically oriented, so we'll usually use physical moves like Chip Away, Crunch, Aqua Jet, things of that nature. Went for Soap there, so it takes away my Ground Stab. Um, because now I'm just Water-type. And that actually proved to be the difference. And uh, he didn't die from a second Bulldoze, so he got a Crunch off. But I killed him with the third Bulldoze. And Seismitoad grew up to level 42. He's going to bring out another Basculin, but since I don't have the stab anymore, it's going to take me three hits to kill him. So I might as well switch out to Zebstrika. And as long as I'm faster, which I should be, and I am, I can probably kill him here with one spark. And yep, Basculin goes down. And uh, yeah, not too much of a hassle at all. So that was a lot of fun. The next thing we should do is probably go grab this item, I'm thinking. And it is TM06, Toxic, which is a useful TM both in the game and in competitive battles. And I like to always include uh, where the TMs are useful for because uh, for those of you that have no interest in competitive battles, um, you might not have any need for certain TMs. Um, and for those of you that are only interested in competitive battles after this, um, you might want to pick up specific ones. So yeah, Toxic is good all around though. Uh, it's a great move. It badly poisons your... Uh, opponent, so the poison damage increases every turn, so just a really good move. Anyway, we're fighting an Alamomala here, and this thing is so incredibly difficult to knock out, especially when you're trying to knock it out with physical moves because it has high defense and a boatload of HP, and you can see how much Bulldoze did there, and it's stabbed, and I have a 7 level advantage on this thing. As it looks like it's going to be a 4 hit KO. And now he goes for the Soak, so now I'm just Water-type, and I don't have the Stab for Bulldoze, so that's just freaking awesome. So now Brick Break's actually going to do more damage. And I'm hoping, first of all, that I don't get confused here, and no, I don't. The downside to him using Soak is that now Water Pulse is not very effective instead of being neutral. Because I'm just Water-type, obviously. And yeah, I'm getting my uh, Aqua Ring... HP back, so that part is good, and he just keeps protecting here, I don't know why, he's not getting any health back, if he used Aqua Ring himself, that would make sense, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense, he was just stalling his own death, and eventually, another Brick Break knocks him out, so in four hits, Alamomala goes down, I just love saying his name, and surprisingly, Alamomala is actually really, really good at uh, competitive battles, because he just tanks everything, and uh, he's just impossible to kill. So if you give him moves like Toxic and Protect and uh, Leftovers, he just will keep regenerating his health and just never freaking die. And it's awful. I and mean, you can tell I had some bad experiences with Alamomola already. Anyway, I picked up a Deep Sea Tooth there, which um, really is only good for after you complete the game because uh, it helps evolve Clam Pearl. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that because... Both of Clam Pearl's evolutions are awful, so yeah, not really interested in that at all. So, I'm going to give my lucky egg to Zeb Stricket again because there's probably going to be some more uh, water type Pokemon in this battle here. Against this swimmer, and you do not have to battle him, obviously. You can avoid him pretty easily, actually, but I decided, you know what, we should probably battle him. 
All right, Basculin at level 32 is his lead Pokemon, and I know I can kill this thing very easily with one spark, so I'm gonna do just that. And Basculin goes down, and he has another Basculin. I'm hoping he doesn't have four, that'd be just kind of stupid and boring. But uh, this is a blue striped Basculin, so I'll just kill him in one hit. I got a crit, but obviously that doesn't matter at all. And Zebstrick, it grows up to level 43, and it looks like it's going to be four Basculins. Two red, two blue. Nothing interesting here. So we'll spark it. Down it goes. And this is just terribly boring. Terribly, terribly boring. And they're all at level 32 also. Just incredibly low leveled for this point in the game. I mean, obviously you could do this uh, before battling the gym leader because you get Surf before you get to Sierra City, but still, just painfully easy. All right, so what do I actually need to do here? Um, you need to hit this just right in order to uh, be able to get across the way there. But yeah, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything here, so I'm going to head over this way. And, no, you can't go that way. Okay, that's what I thought. But for some reason, I was thinking maybe these go the other way as well, and there's another way around, but it doesn't appear though, as though there um, is a, another way. So we're just going to have to go via the rapids up there. So I was going the right way anyway. I don't know what I was doing. All right, well, we might as well just surf back over there because I'm just being a stupid noob over here. Uh, okay. I do not like these water levels. Even in Pokemon, I don't like water levels. Nobody likes water levels. Alright, so... The key here, I guess, is to just... Go along the rapids in such a direction. So, I guess just... Go on the bottom ones. I guess that's the easiest way to explain it. It's not rocket science, man! Okay, so... Apparently no hidden items on the rocks here is nice and uh, we can go battle this hiker which I'm sure is either going to have fighting or rock type Pokemon so Zebstrick is not necessarily the best uh, thing to handle that and we have not really used our Chandelure yet so I would love to give him a uh, shot because he probably can one hit KO a lot of things now with that massive special attack stat so let's go Mr. Hiker let's see what you're made of Hiker Jeremiah, and he has a Bulldore, as pretty much every single hiker in the game has. Um, so anyway, uh, he does have the type advantage with um, his rock type moves, so I'm going to Will-O-Wisp him to reduce his attack, so Smackdown shouldn't do too much, and even though it's super effective, really doesn't do that much at all. And actually, the key to doing that was actually to break his sturdy, so now I can kill him in one hit very easily, and also take less damage at the same time, so... Pretty uh, good idea there, and uh, Crustal is going to be next. Crustal, it's the evolved form of Dwebble, the bug, and rock-type Pokemon, so uh, these can also have Sturdy, so I'm going to do the same exact thing. And we'll burn it, and he goes for Stealth Rock instead of um, Rock Slide or Smackdown, so that's fine by me. And we'll go for a Hex. I could have also gone for Flame Burst, but Hex will actually do more since he's burned, and I get the double damage. And I kill him off in one hit, and that's pretty easy. That's the easiest way to bypass the Sturdy, especially with these Rock-type Pokemon. Just burn them because it reduces their attack, they do less damage to you, and then uh, the Sturdy's broken, you can uh, kill it with anything. So, a lot of times you can kill them with almost any uh, special attack. So, alright, so, I, I don't know, I thought I missed something there, but apparently not. I don't know what I'm doing half the time, honestly, I really don't. Okay, so in this house here, this is important because uh, you can actually pick up an awesome Pokemon here, and this house is actually pretty cool because you can also uh, get your Pokemon healed up since you're so far from a Pokemon Center. Um, but you can grab an egg here, and it's Larvesta, the bug and fire type uh, pre-evolution of uh, Volcarona, which is uh, one of the best Pokemon in this generation. And yeah, since I have a full party, it can't get the egg at this point, um, but I'm probably not going to come back and get it at all, but just know that uh, you can get it here if you want to add it to your team. It takes forever to evolve, 
Uh, it doesn't evolve into its final form. Actually, it's only a two uh, stage evolution, so it only evolves once, and it doesn't evolve into uh, Volcarona until like 50 something, so it's kind of a waste of time as far as the uh, as using it in game because. I mean, you would be at the Elite Four already, or after, by the time it would evolve, so... I don't know. Alright, so we're gonna battle this Backpacker, and she has an Emolga at level 35. I've got my Kraganol out here. Uh, he's gonna have the type advantage on this Electric and Flying type, and Ice Beam takes it out very nicely. And I actually outspeed it, too, which is awesome, because Kraganol is just surprisingly fast. It has, like, 100, or at, at least 100 base speed, which is kind of wacky for a Snowflake thingy, but... Yeah, it does, so it can actually outspeed a lot of things, which is kind of kind of weird. But anyway, I'm actually going to stop here, guys. We'll explore the rest of this route in the next episode and get some uh, useful items and one particular item that's going to be very useful after we beat the game. But anywho, that's it for this time, guys, and uh, stay tuned for episode number 42. Game on!